I wish I had hair like me, Flanagan, <laughs> instead of my two strands. Can you catch? There's two balls coming your way. <laughs> Pete's got this new thing of buying himself face cream off Adam's. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Therapy Crouch with me, Abby Clancy. Me, Peter Crouch. You want to put your phone down now, darling? My f- the, the session plan... My organisation's on the phone this week. That's all too technical for me. I, I like a, a firm piece of paper. I've been doing this for years, so obviously it comes natural to me. I have a plan. And, yeah, because um, you're a, um, a pundit. You're used I'm to all this. a podfather, that's what I am. And you're a podfather. <laughs> how, 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 are, how is the Peter Crouch podcast doing in the charts, by the way? Because I, I didn't see it in the I, top five where mine was. <laughs> Absolutely flying. <laughs> Better than this drivel. Sorry if you can hear any drilling upstairs. It's not us because we're on the couch. <laughs> no, I'm joking. We've um, actually got a problem with our roof. All right. So we're getting some work done. So what we've been up to? We had a great Friday night, didn't we? Yeah. It was. We went to see Mickey. Well, you Flanagan. had a better Friday night than I did. I, yeah, I did. Enjoyed it. So I enjoyed myself. <laughs> it, it's it's just really annoying. Like I, I wasn't feeling too well. Didn't we just know it? <laughs> And, uh, you know, we went to see Mickey Flanagan and I, I wasn't feeling myself. And then, you know... Do you know what my crime was? Go laughing on. at a comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> laughing too much. <laughs> no, you were just like... I, I don't know if you, like, thought I'm at a comedy show, so I'm going to try and outstage or upstage Mickey Flanagan I, to our own friends. I went to we went to Mickey Flanagan, which was absolutely incredible. By the way, it was so funny. And I've missed. Him I was you. totally fine beforehand with me and Ab. We sat in silence, obviously watched the show, and then I was in trouble after it. So I hadn't I hadn't spoke. <laughs> Never. No. It was genuinely one of the most baffling experiences of my life. No, because anyway. like all of the like gags about un- how unhappy he was in his relationship. <laughs> You couldn't <laughs> stop laughing at them. I was like, oh is my that God, why? that's me. That's me. That's my life. I said that once when he said something. It was, it was, it's, it's all relatable. I reckon everyone in that entire arena went home. Oh my God, that's just like us. It's, it's what it is. It's relatable. Yeah, but I felt sick. I can't it's always be like fun, Abby. Let's just move on from that. Fabby. Behaviour. Fabby, yeah. But anyway, if you don't get a chance to see it, it is, it is is fantastic. It's it? an inc- I actually think it was his best show yet. Like, he's just so funny. You know, um, I think he was slightly concerned about being cancelled. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> throughout the show. But do you know what? Life's for living and you've got to have fun. And if a comedian can't make a joke, then we're all fucked, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> What do you good, think? Good point, though. No? I agree totally. It's, it's, it's a, you go there to laugh. Yeah. That's what they're supposed to do. Like, can you imagine a comedian, like, not telling funny jokes? There'd be no such thing as a comedian. <laughs> you know, if, if it was just normal people having a conversation, that wasn't funny. You know, it has to be controversial and funny. Otherwise, he's just like Joe Bloggs next door, isn't he? Mm. No, no, it was, it was sensational, I thought. He, was great. he looked well as well. It did look well, yeah. Mm. He's 60 as well, you know. I did can't you know believe that. that. Great head of hair. A great head of hair. God. I wish I had hair like me, <laughs> instead of my two strands. But no, it was fun. I actually want to go and see him again. Mm. We don't do that enough, I don't think. Go to comedy shows. It's a great night out. The, going to a comedy show is so underrated. Like everyone thinks you've got to go to a bar and get drunk. You know, it's a it's a whole different experience just going and having a laugh. You know, mm. proper laughing at a comedian. It, 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 it's literally the best it's the best tonic laughter. Do you know what did tickle me as well? I think this is the, what you were saying about um, me relating it to our life. Like he literally spoke about shouting through walls. Yeah. Like and there were like, so yeah. many things that he's talked about. I was like, I was like is Mickey Flanagan going to listen to our podcast? <laughs> Steal, stealing our... Um, material. Stealing our material. Well, it was genuinely... It was, he was talking about like shouting through walls and then you have to come and then it's, it's always something that you can't... It's no interest in. <laughs> oh my god what's up darling and you go oh can, can you remind go me back why, down. can you remind me why you're actually married to me because it seems like everything I say or do or well after the other night I did question it talk about or think about or have to say it's got zero relevance to you 
Well, uh, should we go into the wines? Because we feel like we're there already. Okay, let's go. Well, well I've got one. My one is the bathroom. The bathroom in situation at the minute. Um, we so, went from having a... So we've talked about the bathroom. The bathroom Pete reluctantly wanted to do up. Um... Which is now complete. I didn't reluctantly. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't reluctant. I didn't want to do it up. Yeah. No. Reluctantly. Yeah. Did so, up. You reluctantly. <laughs> you did it up, and I was reluctant. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I didn't reluctant. I didn't make any decisions at all. But anyway, now we've got a much worse bathroom. The other day, I was brushing my teeth because there's no plug for the electric uh, toothbrush that we like. Um, so th- we've gone more primitive. So we've paid money. <laughs> and got a worse product. <laughs> the marble looks lovely. That looks great. That's obviously what you did it for. But functional-wise, um, I've got a drawer that's much smaller. I can't fit any of my stuff in it. Um, Pete, the, the, you've got the, two the toothbrush doesn't charge. There's no mirror anymore. There used There's to no be a mirror in the bathroom. No mirror. <laughs> I find so, that hard to believe. No mirror in the bathroom. Um, so the other day I was brushing my teeth with a Spider-Man. is on it. A <laughs> Spider-Man toothbrush that I found. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even get any, barely get any toothpaste in it. And I've, and I've shelled out for this bathroom that doesn't work. So the mirror is on a 10 week lead time. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Because it's made to order for the size. And there is a connection for the toothbrush in the drawer, but it's not connected yet. Still waiting for the electrician to come by. But going, going onto the small drawer, it's not a smaller drawer, actually. We've had, we had, if you think about it, we had two drawers and now we've got four drawers and a big cupboard underneath. But no, I think you've got six drawers and I've got <laughs> what, I've one little thing yeah, in the corner. Yeah, but you've got, so Pete's, Pete's got this new thing of buying himself face cream off Adam's. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just any face cream. It's Elemis Marine oh. Collagen. It's unreal, you know. So if you think Honestly, he's looking younger. This doesn't just happen. I thought you were mean? looking perky. <laughs> this doesn't just happen. You know what, I mean? what I want to know is what did you search for? No, do you know what I use? You, you, you know, you were always having a go at me about using your products. And oh yeah, like that, that's right? another fucking wine I've got. Yeah, yeah. So don't, I don't want to use your products, right? So I buy my own and get hammered for that. Yeah, but why? What did you type in to get El- Elemis Marine Collagen Balm? Oh, because that's laugh. very specific. You're gonna laugh. I think I typed in um, luxury face cream. <laughs> <laughs> luxury. So I didn't want. I didn't want like. I wanted like full on like your stuff. Your stuff's different level, isn't it? It is a different level. Yeah. And I, so I went, I wanted something like that. So I went for that. And then also it's good because it's got SPF in it mm-hmm. as well, which I found out today. It's a little bit too late for you, honey. Why well, not? Nice, it's like a bloody map. Well, I've been outside, I've like <laughs> map. <laughs> been outside my whole life. You don't realise even in this country when it's not sunny, you still get skin damage. Babe, I tell, I tell you Well, this. I know that, but I've realised it now. Yeah, but why can't you just go and buy your own? Yeah, I have amount. done. Because <laughs> he doesn't use a piece, even on the bottle, it says like a pea sized amount. Pete's like that <laughs> on his hand, like a whole bottle. You know, I bought myself these. Now I've got my new bathroom. Oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. The cat litter tray's not in there anymore, so it doesn't stink of cat shit. Progress. Um, and I thought, you know, get a nice bath. Bought myself this little box of all little mini essential oils, all in little glass bottles. Absolutely beautiful. The smell, you know, I love getting a bath before bed. That's what I do every night. Bath, cream on, dressing gown, double knotted. (laughs) Double knotted. (laughs) It's good to get a bath. Every single oil is gone. (laughs) (laughs) Do you want to talk about that? Well, uh, well, uh, there's an oil next to the bath. It's so nice. I like to relax with it. You put it in the bath? Yeah. (laughs) Straight in the bath. (laughs) Unreal. But I don't have anything. <laughs> Relax, like, de stress. It's that time, that five minutes for just a bit of me time. After <laughs> long, long, hard day at the old face gym. <laughs> you put your collagen moisturizer on in exactly. an essential oil bath. No, it's 2023. Ken, you know what I mean? You... I call him Ken. Ken. <laughs> Ken. Like what? I look like a bore face cream. <laughs> like, come on. You, it's, you've got to look after yourself. You get to a certain age, you've got to, you know, maintain. Maintain. All I'm doing, it's for you, really. It's not for me. You don't want to look at an old bag, do you? With you know, it doesn't smell nice. You always smell nice, but that's down to my the oils. <laughs> but I, I just it because I have it with the kids as well. Like everything, like I go to get my mascara, it's gone. 
you know, my body scrub is gone. Like Sophia's using all like my shampoos for like severely damaged hair on a beautiful virgin hair. I'm like, get out of my bathroom. Mm. Stop using my stuff. My mum used to say it to me and I, I used to be like, what's she going on about? Like, I get it. I feel the pain. It's awful. Like she gets she gets in the bath as well with the fucking oils and then comes down in like my brand new like t-shirt and all my gym stuff. But what's with the not, you know, all my stuff just gets, you know, I... Pete, I'm, I'm not my using bag. your like... No, my bag would just be there. Shoulders. And like, that's yeah. that's my bag. Like, don't touch my bag. Like, there's loads of stuff, you know, my own personal stuff in there, right? We wish you've lost. You, just go you lost th- your bag. You just go through it all. You just like, bang, bang. You just get, you get the bank card out, leave it all in the wrong places, stuff like that. Like, what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine. So if there's oils there, I'll just put, I'll put them in the bath. Yeah, just share. We're a partnership. So are you going to re- um, replenish them because they're all gone now? I don't know where you get them from. Space NK. <laughs> Just type in luxury essential oils. <laughs> luxury <laughs> oils. <laughs> Slivery little sucker. <laughs> so I've got my wine. Oh, well, that wasn't it. No. There's another one. That's just you in general. Um, so my wine this week, other than you using all of my beauty products. You do look good though, to be fair. Thanks, babe. So my wine is a really annoying habit that Pete's got. So the other night, you watching a football match and we ordered a takeaway from the Italian down the road, but we they don't deliver. So we had to pick it up. Mm-hmm. And I was getting all the kids to bed while Pete was watching the match and he wouldn't get, go and collect it. So I was like, he was like, I can't because I'm watching the match. I'm like, just pause the match. Bearing in mind, this is Real Madrid versus Manchester City, oh. right? In the Champions League semi final. She's saying, just pause it. <laughs> what? So, just pause the match. It's live. Yeah, but it, doesn't that build up the suspense? Not at all. So much can go wrong. One of the kids could press stop, go and. and no, they, could, they, they couldn't have because I was putting them to bed at this point. Not just that, your phone's on you, you know, you live but, updates. But I said, turn your phone off while you go and get the food. So I had to turn my phone off, yeah. pause the game, and go and get food where Ab's doing absolutely nothing. No, so I was just. He <laughs> She's was in the garden having a glass of wine. I'm not going. <laughs> oh my God. I but don't I, ask a lot. I'd, eat, I'd, I'd had my dinner. This is your dinner. So you can go and get it. <laughs> So I we Terrible. I literally jumped on top of him and was like wrestling <laughs> the remote. We had a full wrestling match for about it was a good five minutes. So you missed five minutes anyway. You would have been there and back <laughs> in that whole wrestle segment. I couldn't um, believe it. It's my fault for going. I shouldn't go. I should I should just say no. No, but you paused it and then had your dinner, press play, and everything was fine. So that like twenty minutes of debate could have been. It worked out all right. But any person who enjoys football will tell you, you don't pause a live football match. You can pause match of the day. You can pause highlights. Nobody pauses. So you're telling me you could have just found all this out on the highlights? And it- <laughs> 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 well, just don't even watch the game. Just watch the highlights. Yeah, so we that didn't even not, have to watch it. That is not, unfortunately, how live sport works. It's live just- support. Life I needed sport. to be on life support after that night. Boring football. Again, another nonsense weekly wine from you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't pause live football. It's not. I'm not backing down on that one. It's not how it works. So are we cheers into no more pausing of live matches? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is beetroot, carrot and ginger juice. I've got you made me an orange cordial. <laughs> How old are you? Which is bizarrely one of my favourite drinks. <laughs> Cheers. You know some of these audience wines here. You know what we just touched on there before. Mm. Uh, one of them here. My husband is always using my razor. It drives me mad. Uh, Why do men love using our products? Interesting, uh, eh? Yeah, because you obviously a thing. Yeah, because you pretend that you don't care about the way you look and what you're doing. And I'm a man. I don't have to use face cream or brush my hair. But really, you're so jealous of all this luxury products are putting on ourselves well no what it is is like when I'm in the bathroom that's when I think about using face cream or having a shave if I'm out and about the last thing I think about is oh, Nima, I must buy some uh... yeah, but no when you're buying your corset doll on your um, head and shoulders you could buy a little face cream are you there yeah well I, I do now like, that's the thing. I, like it's, it's something I never thought about as a kid but I think about now if you think about it I don't use anything of yours got a few more in my boyfriend leaves the biggest skids you'll ever see oh, the God. other day it would have been a meal for two if you'd scraped it off 
this podcast is getting far too low rent for my liking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk. <laughs> my partner leaves his tea bag in the mug when he's drinking it. Gives me the ick. Ugh. No, that's no good. I hate it when people leave the tea bag in the sink. Like, why the fuck would you do that? Stains the sink. Yeah, yeah. At what age is it acceptable for you to buy clothes for your son? My boyfriend's mum has bought him the most horrendous childish T-shirt that a seven-year-old would wear. <laughs> His friend's kid even has the same shirt and pointed pointed at it and said, that's my T-shirt. <laughs> How do we tell her to stop buying him childish clothes? He's 29 for context. What's, what's the T-shirt got on it? I don't know. It doesn't say. But... Um, I think this is something that if you don't have a girlfriend or a wife, or it's, you know, it's quite nice. You know, mum buying him a t-shirt, but obviously he's going to get he's going to get some stick for it. He's almost thirty. Did your mum used to buy your clothes? Yeah, she used to buy me a few bits and pieces. Yeah. To what age? <laughs> I want to say twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say twelve, but if you just turn them numbers back to twelve. I think I was at um, I was at Portsmouth at the time. <laughs> I had to tell her to stop. Your mum was um, your mum was privy to it, like a John Smedley jumper or yeah. a Lyle and Scott for you. No, the Lyle and Scott was all my own design. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was all my own. Um, it was all the rage then, though. Really? Well, they were all the rage, you know. It's like it wasn't maybe the most. Yeah, but it's only the same. I buy all your clothes now. Yeah, I just don't have. Um, I don't know. I think you you're the fashionista of the family, aren't you? So I, hardly. I'll let you um, decide for me. I think. I think men are so easy to dress. Like women, it's a whole different. I never know what to wear in the day. I think with with women, variety is key, isn't it? Like you need to you need to spice things up. You, you want a different thing for a different occasion. With men, I think you can just you can just keep churning out the same look in a different way. It's jeans and t-shirt or jeans and top, whatever, and shirt. Mm. You know, suit, standard for, pretty standard for an event. <laughs> there you go, guys. Some tips from the Crouch Meister. <laughs> <laughs> How to look after yourself. It's good advice, isn't it? You, know I mean? you could still buy him the stuff, but he could just stop wearing it, couldn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, you know, look at me. Like I've, I've managed to get myself a Victoria's Secret model. Oh yeah. Should we touch on your um in the shop? In the shop window. Incredible that isn't I'm it? shy about it. Wow, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's a bit bit of a surreal thing and a bit of a dream come true. Um Not just the window, by the way, the entire you know, we went up to the one in Bond Street, the entire shop window, all of them. But I, I was slightly concerned because obviously when my when my campaign come out and it, it's across the whole shop. Pete went down there and like filmed it all. And I was like, <laughs> Pete's gonna end up getting arrested for like being a peeping Tom. It was slightly concerning when I was filming, you know, a, a women's underwear shop. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, there was a few people obviously like, probably thinking, look at this pervert. <laughs> but I was really, I'm proud of you, you know, it's incredible. To, but it's to acceptable be... to perv on your wife. Yeah, and I'm, you know, yeah, I probably was perving, but I was also very proud of, of you. Thank you. You know, because I know that you've always wanted to do that, haven't you? And it's been a dream of yours and you've managed to achieve it. Mm. Well done. We've had a huge response to our icks mm. um, from last week's episode. And I think we've offended a few cat lovers. So I think the the favourites were the um, running for the bus. <laughs> that, that one took us to be that. I know. Running for the like, well, how could I don't think that's I don't, surely you're allowed to run for the bus. Yeah, it's if you've got a terrible run. Yeah, but like no one would like ick at Usain Bolt running for the bus. You'd probably run faster than the bus. Do you know what I mean? It's got to be an icky person. It's just got to be a shit run, I think. Like, <laughs> I think it's got to be a terrible run. The cat thing, I, listen, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's, I don't think that's one more. <laughs> I come home from work and you'll be sitting on the couch with the cat on your knee. Dr. Evil. Yeah, yeah, but it's not like, it wasn't my choice to... And also we've got kids, you know? I don't think... I think a single man, a bachelor pad with a cat is feels a bit a bit weird. 
I'm sorry, guys, but that's how I feel. Okay. I've got a load of the socks as well, the half socks. <laughs> I've had a load of load of pics on social media from people in half socks. Oh, John, um, Sadie and ours, um, the other night, and said, can I borrow some of Pete's clothes and his socks and pulled a pair of halves <laughs> out <laughs> of your drawer? I do own them. <laughs> right, so this episode, babe, right, what's it about? Talk to me. So I think we we're going to do a god parenty vibe because... It's 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 that season, isn't it? It's christening season. Is it? I suppose they happen in the summer, do they? Yeah, because that's when I got christened in the summer. It was red hot, I remember. I got christened on Easter Sunday. Did you? Yeah. And it was like a special year of something as well. Like I remember my nan and my mum always saying, like, that everyone said you were the best looking baby. And it was like this the most special day, and even the priest couldn't believe it. I look like freaking Googie, <laughs> the, the Liverpool duck on all the midges of the bonnet on with all feathers. I was so fat. Oh. But we haven't christened any of our kids. No. Why is that? Well, I think in Liverpool, it's like a thing to do. Like everyone christens the kids and then you kind of get into the good schools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Liv, Liv said to me the other day, you know, she she said, uh, can I be Christmas? She asked me. She said, she asked her why. And she said, I want to try the bread. <laughs> That's a communion. <laughs> What's yeah. that? Yeah. She, whatever, yeah. Well, I'll think, be honest with you, I'm not that religious. Um, and I know you're what, like a... I, w- I was brought Catholic up as a Catholic and, and right. went to Catholic schools. and um, But I'm also not a very religious person. I've got my own faith. And I believe in if you're kind and nice to people and you know, do the right thing morally and that's enough. That's where, that I, like, I do actually believe in God, I, but I don't, I have it in my own way. I'm not like, I don't conform to religion. <laughs> <laughs> Organised religion's it, not for me. It's not for me. Mine's my own personal religion that I've created in my own head and I've got my own beliefs, which I won't share. They're private. You say your prayers every night. I do, so It's funny, like when we're going to sleep, <clears throat> I'll be like talking, obviously, <laughs> to Pete yeah. in bed. And then he'll interrupting. Just, <laughs> interrupting in his prayer. And then he'll just like stop talking. And then obviously I've slept in the same bed as him for 17 years now. So I'll just like stop talking while he says his prayer and then just continue Do my conversation. Do you say it in your head? Do you? Do you? Yeah. We're I'm better. desperate to know what it is. You it's... won't tell me. It's private, isn't it? Is it the same prayer every night? Yeah. Like a saying? Yeah, pretty much. Oh. Did you make it up or was it like a... No, I'll make it up, yeah. Is it Our Father? No, I made, I made it up. Like I say, it's my own personal religion. I can guess exactly what it would be. <laughs> go on up, have a go. It'll be like, dear God, please... <laughs> oh, is it? It'll be like, dear God, please can you look after all of my loved ones? I am um, I just want to say thanks for... um you know, my house, happiness, and pl- can you please look after my family and loved ones and Not far off blah, me. blah. Uh-huh. I think it'd be some... some I, think it's, I think it's nice to just appreciate what you've got um, at the end of the day sometimes. Well, every day since I was about 12. So I do do that, yeah. That's so interesting. Mm. Never knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. Yeah, generally, yeah. I've always done it, yeah. Just... uh Never ever told anyone either. So fucking, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> the one person who could expose me has fucking exposed me. <laughs> yeah, but it's nothing to be ashamed of. I think it's nice, like people. No, it's a nice thing. It's, it's generally it's something that I've always done since I was twelve, and something that. I, um... Did you start doing that? On did it start with, please God, please can I be a footballer? Did a bit. Please yeah. can I be a footballer? God, you, God I will do anything if you make me a footballer. Do you know what? As a kid, that is genuinely, I, you've they literally nailed, nailed it. Because I, I, I know you inside, I know you. No, that was, that's how it started. And then that has happened, right? And then I was like, oh my God, like this is, he's, 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 he's I great, believe him. <laughs> this is your insurance I better policy. start thanking him. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, so um, a friend of ours has asked, been asked to be a godparent and they give me a, uh, they call me up and was like, God, I actually feel like there's a lot of pressure and burden on being a godparent. Like, what does that entail? Does that mean if anything happens to them, then I get, like, stuck with their kids? <laughs> stuck with their kids. Is that the way you're looking at it? That's what they said to me, my friend. That was the quote. Uh, 
Oh. So I know we're godparents for quite a few of our friends. We've got our little Luca. Mm. Um, are you godparents of Luca or is it just me? It's just you, I think. And then we've got Shay and your mm. godparents of Cruz, mm. like my best friend from school. That I felt quite emotional about it. Like, I was quite uh, I was quite pleased with that. Obviously, they wanted um, like a couple mm -hmm. to be, you know, godparents to their, to their kids, didn't they? Um, but when we agreed, we didn't have four children of our own. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, Holly, best look after herself. <laughs> but like, what is the actual point of a godparent? Like, seriously. So if you're, you're supposed to, if something happens to them, you you take over or what? Or you, well, do you just oversee the christening and be like, you know, I... Like a like best man, people. almost. Almost like a best man. Do you... Oh God! Yeah, yeah, it's well, like I, it's I something think, that's I think, sort of. I think um, if you go into the kind of, I don't know if history is the right word, but the kind of the religious background, the religious, the religious aspect of it, it's kind of like you're there to like step in as a parent figure and be there for that child, you know, mm. emotionally, physically, you know, if anything happens to the parents. But I think you know, in reality. If something did happen to the parents, they probably go to a family member first. Some some godparents are really take it really seriously. You know, like I know people that take it really seriously, and it's like they they really want to be involved in the in the kids' lives. And sometimes you can't speak to your mum and dad, but you can go and speak to your godparents, and like someone, it's like another voice that's not in. Yeah, you can bounce off. Yeah, some I, th I think take I think really that th that's what I take from a godparent there for that child if they need to, sp if they have issues that they can't speak to their parents about or mm. a family member or. <clears throat> yeah, it's just I suppose another support network, mm. but it's similar to like when we go on a plane and you text um, like your next of kin uh, about. Yeah, because you're what, my next of kin and you're bloody always. We're, next we're on a plane about the kids. She texts like either a brother or a mom or something like, makes me do it as well <laughs> on voice note. No, because I'm always go, scared so if we in case if we die. <laughs> I've got all the kids. No, because I'm always scared in case you know. I always want like evidence of it because. Yeah. I think if we did die and then people started, you know, knocking on the door, like, I'm taking your kids and I'm doing that. You know, if you've just got the evidence of a text, I don't know how well that would stand up in court. But if if I if we gave our wishes to people and said, if anything happens to us on this flight, you're in charge and this is what you've got to do. Oh, and I, it's a detailed list that I send. It's a really nice message for, uh, like, a brother to receive. Yeah. Um, you know, have a great holiday if we die. <laughs> <laughs> You're in charge. I don't know what's worse, us dying or him being in charge. <laughs> well, I've seen now he's trained his dog, so he's off the list now. Is he? Yeah. The hound's been here all weekend, causing havoc. The rim of the rug. Is oh my god! This brown rim. Now. The rim. Wow. The rim is chocolate yeah, brown. Have you given up now with this rug because it's yeah, in a terrible state? I've ordered two state. new rugs. I've gone for a leather rim on the next. Yeah, but is that good or bad? Can you just wipe that? Well, I'm hoping so. If I got a faux leather rim, I could wipe it. <laughs> Why is the word rim so funny? <laughs> but I'm just gonna. I'm. I, I'm. I'm just getting a new rug. Simple as that. The yeah. dog shit on the rug yesterday. The dog. The the um super trained the Great Dane puppy. Oh. Been oh. in the garden, playing around for an hour and comes in. Does his business on the cream rug, God. which I I just can't cope with. I just can't go with it. I bet you Jeffrey's loving this. He looks like golden balls. Yeah, also, yeah Jeffrey it? is just impeccably see what, see trained. See what you could be putting up with. <laughs> Jeffrey is impeccably trained, and he's learning bad habits from this mutt. <laughs> <laughs> he's quite defensive about it, isn't he? <laughs> so Yoke is is um defenses. Oh, she's only four months old. Jeffrey was finding iPhones at four months old. You know, my dog's trained. Is that, to... what, you, is that what you bought him for? Yeah. iPhones and bank cards. Jeffrey, bank card. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Wasn't he though? Yeah, yeah. No, he, well, he's good, yeah. He's good now. Very good. It's just with regards to food, that's the daddy. This is vice, isn't it? It's weakness. This is he, he does jump off and nick a bacon sandwich every now and then. I can't. He eats everything. I made cakes with the kids the other day. And we were like hours decorating them, 20 cupcakes, icing, all the sprinkles, everything. Went out the room, come back, every single one gone. 
Was he all right? Yeah, he was, of course he was all right. I wasn't all right. I was, <laughs> I was so excited. That's my favourite thing, isn't it? A cake and a cup of tea. Yeah. And he, and he took it. But, you know, going on the godparents thing, I think I might be asked to be a bridesmaid at some stage. Oh, you've never been a bridesmaid, have you? No. Obviously, I'll be my sister's bridesmaid. That's already planned, mm. even though she's not engaged. Yes. But um, my best friend from school is getting married. I'd love her not to ask you now. Yeah. Now that you said well, that, I would tickle me. She asked me, she asked me if I were to date. I actually haven't replied because it's, it's it's in half term. So she said, can this, does this date work for you? But she actually did ask me. Oh, no way. <laughs> so you've just invited yourself into this oh, no. scenario. No, I'm, I'm, um, well, I hope it's coming. Surely it has to. She's my best mate. No yeah. pressure if you listen to this. I know. I hope she doesn't listen because I don't even know if it's public. I'll have to ask her. Well, she's pretty anonymous at the moment, isn't she? Yeah. That's true. Mentioning she knows who she is. <laughs> Putting her under all sorts of pressure, haven't you? But it's a hard one, the bridesmaid thing. I, I've got advice for people who are ask, asking bridesmaids to be bridesmaids. Please enlighten us. We're all desperate to know. <laughs> what? Come on then. No, so you did it right. Like you only had your like your best man and your groomsman as a, a, people who have always been a constant in your life mm. and will always be. And I think with girls, sometimes when you're asking for your bridesmaid, you, you might be like in a new group at the mm. time and hang around with certain people. And then you get married and like literally never see them again. And then you've got like, <laughs> should I say this? Yeah, yeah. It's because girls haven't got any real mates, have they, usually? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, <laughs> girls, when you're choosing your bridesmaids, pick you want your ride or dies, one and onlys, or like your sister or cousin. You know what's good about, um, I like about godparents, like the ones that are on it, you know, like mm. my uncle Pete is my godfather. Um, you know, you never... Oh, you said you weren't christened? No, I was, I'm christened. I was christened. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We had a great day. I remember it well. It was a roasting hot day. How can you remember being christened? I remember it, yeah. I remember it clear as day. I remember the day, everything. We had a big party in the garden. It was great. You sh that's yeah, your I was, I was about, that's your communion? I was about 12. That's your communion you're talking about? No, it was a christening. christening. It was a christening. You can't get christened Sarah when you're Sarah got christened 12. and they christened me as well. Maybe it was Sarah's was christening then. I just kicked, I just kicked into it. Are you I sure remember that it says well. <laughs> Are you sure that wasn't your circumcision? Party. Ah, <laughs> uh, christening circumcision. <laughs> potato, potato. <laughs> Dave, I don't think you are christened. I'm circumcised. <laughs> <laughs> So have you never, has anyone ever asked you and you've thought about saying no to being a godparent? No. Would you ever say no? No, we've only ever, we've only no. ever been asked once, haven't we? Twice. I, I'm, I, I'm the godparent to two people. Yeah. Two kids. And I've got my sister's kids, obviously. Yeah. So I'm involved with them. Mm. I don't. But do you take the role of a godparent seriously? Not particularly, no. <laughs> that bad. I don't. I think. I don't know. I think. Yeah, but you're either that. Kind I'm not of, religious. But you're really. I, you're you're either that kind of person or you're not. Are you like th there are certain types of people like the person that writes a thank you card for a present. You know, sends a Christmas mm. card to people. Oh, I wish I was better at that. I wish I, I was. I wish I was that person so much. Like I say, my uncle Pete is so good at that. Like he, he never. He doesn't forget the kids' birthdays. Mm. You know, he hasn't seen them for ages and he's like, oh, he just still sends a card. I think that's... My dad's a, like that as well. Your dad's good at that, yeah. It's a good thing. It's a nice thing. Just let people know you're thinking of them. But do you know what I hate about them kind of people though? <laughs> they don't remind you when it's their birthday. So then... Yeah. So like, I always they, like don't miss... remind them. I always remind... I always miss like Sue's birthday or my dad's birthday because everyone's in January. Well, my dad's in February, but like everyone's in January. So I always get it like a day late and I'm like dad give me the heads up you know mm. yeah, yeah yeah so th those people who were like so organised never that slippery one like don't they don't tell you like 
for instance, and it causes so much hurt. It hurts people's feelings when you forget. And I'm like, you know, you could easily give me a heads up. Yeah, heads up, yeah. I think with older people, do you like like physical calendars, don't they? And they mark out all the important dates. That's every what year. I have. A physical calendar. Yeah. On the wall. Yeah. What pictures do you have? I've got a Vin Diesel calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Vin Diesel calendar. Ugh. So if your mate's not fussed on the kids, how can she say no? Mm, I, I think it depends how close you are. Like, because often you're a good parent, like, oh, your kid could be in Australia or something, and you can't, you know. Yeah. But it's nice if you go round. Australia, like Liverpool. You, you Australia, feel like Liverpool. you're part of the family. You yeah. know, like but then your I good think... parent is, is, is it might not be, um, you know, actual family, but you feel like your family's grown because yeah. you've added people who are really important and special to you yeah. that would look after your child and you would trust them because you trust them that much as as though they're family. I think yeah. that's what God being a good parent's about. And I, But I yeah. think, you know, if we were to christen our kids and ask our family, like my brother and sister, you know, they're actually too close to take any value from that title. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Exactly, that's why I think They'd be nice. like, oh God, no thanks. You know, <laughs> Another <with> job. <laughs> yeah, another job with them. Like, most days anyway. That's why it's special for someone who you... Cl I think what a godparent is, well, I'm coming to my own conclusion of this, but I think it's someone you value who's not family, but should be family. Like Tommy and Kaz. Yeah, like Tommy and Kaz. Holly. You yeah, know, Tommy those, and Kaz, Holly. You know, like They're not family, but they are. Mm. Jason Stacy, for instance. You know, mm. like you, they're, they're people who are close to us who who are you'd class as you know special like Greg to me or I you think know, Alfie Ed, would be a good brother, godparent. The boys, Alfie would be great. Yeah, like someone you trust, you know, with your life, a really good friend that you would trust with your kids. But I have, I have like kind of sized people up for the job. You know, when they've been here, let, let's let's just see if they eat that sandwich, if they put the plate in the dishwasher, wipe the table. Was well, that your remit for the godparents? <laughs> They're tidy yeah. around the house. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Let's let's see let's see how it's, it's about confide it's about when you confide let's them. Let's see how surely. they value that my rim. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no if, one if, could value if, your rim any higher than me. <laughs> if if they if they're walking in my if, if they walk on in my house with shoes on and stand on the rim, they're not being a godparent at all. Seriously, that's your yeah. remit, is it? Yeah. So basically, Imagine they, um, they just struck this staying over and they use the show towels or something like that. Oh, gone. I've gone dead, with, dead uh, to me. Pete, we haven't even got any frigging show towels anymore because they're all in use. Like, I've just gone with that one. Really? Yeah. I've broken you down. Mm. I love the ridiculous. Like, that, that bathroom is like, you could write a story on it. Show towels, frigging, you know, the, the, the cupboard not working. Maybe you're not complaining when you're lying in the bath listening to Simply Red. Doused in, <laughs> doused in fucking lavender. Doused in lavender. So I don't know what you're talking about. You've had a bath every night since we've had the, the bathroom. The bath's good. I'm not going to lie. The bath is good. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. You don't know what, you don't know, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. I'm telling you. <laughs> the bath was there anyway. Didn't need to when, you've got your, when you've scalding your skin with radox, <laughs> when I take my oils off, yeah. That's nothing that's wrong an, with radox. That's another thing you buy. I'm a huge <laughs> fan of radox. There's nothing wrong with that. Would you be offended if you asked someone to be your parent, your children's godparents, and they said no? Yeah. But I know all my family will probably say no anyway. So I wouldn't be offended by them. No, but, but I, you know, if you said an outside person, you know, if you said, like, you sat them down and said, I'd really like to be God, because it's, nice, it's a nice thing. Like, if someone entrusts you with that role, like if someone sat me down and said, oh, "I'd love you to be my godparent," it is a, it's a nice thing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, you godparent too. Mm. Yeah, I do. I do. It's quite. It's fills you with pride. You get. You get. Sort of like you feel like you have a responsibility. Mm. Then it's actually made me have a little rain check on, you know, taking my role a bit more serious. You know, I've still got Luca's Christmas present upstairs. Kaz has been here about 10 times and, <laughs> back, and and she's got mine as well. So we're both as useless as each other. Every time she comes, it's like, oh, the tracksuits and trains, I forgot them. All right, well, that's God, Godparents done. Uh, Agony Abs? Yeah. Right, hello, Ag, Ab and Pete. Uh, first off, I'd bloody Ag love to... Like, <laughs> what did I say? Hello, Ag and Pete. <laughs> that was it? Yeah, that's, that's what you should be called. <laughs> hag and Pete. Ag and Pete. Ag or hag? No, ag. I wouldn't offend you. Um, 
Anyway, I need your advice. My partner and I, in the process of buying our first home, we viewed a few houses, but I won't lie, not many, but we fell in love with a three-bedroom semi-detached. I will say there's a lot of cleaning that is needed and decorating as well. That was my part of the appeal. We could make it our own. Now, both of my partner's parents and my parents have seen the property with us. and My future in-laws have been really positive about the house and getting us really excited about moving. I will add, we currently live with them. My parents, on the other hand, don't seem to be supportive at all, being really negative about this house that we really love. I don't know what to say because I don't want to upset them. But them being so negative about our future home is really starting to upset me. Upset me. Can you keep this anon because I don't want to upset anyone, but I really need some advice. Oh. That's unusual that the in-laws are being nice about something. Yeah, because they're living with them and they want them out. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> So obviously it's probably a shithole. Um, <laughs> and they're going, oh, just, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, but the, this is the one. Oh, well, it'll do it up. We all love a project. Yeah, this is great. This get yeah, out. But the moment, the moment it might be, they might be taking on too much and the mum and dad are a bit worried, like saying, oh God, are you sure this is not too much for you to take on? There's a lot of work that need. You know, you do need that voice of reason. It's like when we went to see that house the other day. <laughs> and my class line, just needs a little lick of paint. The whole house needed to be knocked down. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, because it was two bedrooms and there's six of us in our family. Um, three bedrooms. Yeah. 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 I I have that vision though. I love a project. You know, it's it's my passion. Going into houses and doing them up. You know, I, I think nothing excites me more than that. You love it, don't you? I absolutely love it. And, you know. I see this so many, I see so many problems I just see like headaches. Mm. Pound signs. Yeah. Like I do see that. But obviously, you know, you're a you're a dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> Head in the glass. Nice. But getting back to the, you know, the anon. I'm a dreamer. Um I just I just think like you say, the the parents that they're living with are probably very much, you know, they probably haven't listened to Swedish House Mafia for years. <laughs> and um, you know, want to get back to it. Yeah. And you know, they get all to get rid of the kids. Um and obviously the other parents are from a, a different perspective of like, you know, they're chilled, they've got the house themselves. They might be like, I'm not sure this is the right one yeah, for you. Yeah, but it's a big decision. It's Making that decision on a house, it has to be right. And, you know, for us, every, you know, project or every house we've lived in has, has, has been a gut feeling, you know, because we've been into some houses that are like incredible houses, don't need a thing doing to them. And then ones that are a complete wreck needs loads doing to it. But you can, you know, you get that vision and that feeling. And more often than not, we go for the one that needs. When you know, you know, I think. Like when you walk in and when you know, you know. I think so. Go with your gut. Don't well, let any I, I, outside influences. You know, it's your decision. You've got to live there. You yeah. and your husband, you know... It's up to you two. I don't think you should listen to any other because it's even when you're choosing baby names and things like that, like you, oh, we, we you don't tell anyone. We stop. You've got that, to just go we? for it. Yeah, you got to go for it between you two, and then everyone's gonna have an opinion. People, are we did like, that mistake of like going through baby names and like me dad and me like, oh, that's a ridiculous name. That's awful. Oh, I hate that name. And then you end up calling your baby that name, and they're all like, oh, actually. Do you like that name? It's grown on me. You know, there's no going back. You best just do it yourself. And I think the same goes for the house. I do. It's, you know, they've got to live there. It's, mm. you know, it's her future. You know, the, I think it is good to have that bit of rationale behind the scenes saying, you know, have you budget, budgeted well enough for this? You know, it, it's going to cost this to get this, da, 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 da. You know, so they can take it on board. But, you know, ultimately it's their decision and it's where they're going to, you know, make their life together. So. Agreed. Right, and on. Make your make your own mind up. Don't let anyone influence you, including you too. But you 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 yeah, picked up first house. Yeah. I I can't believe that. I know <clears> we've <throat> spoke about it before on the pod, but I I don't know how that happened. Oh, well, we mentioned it. I said I had balls, didn't I? I then I you know I was making decisions for us. You just bought a house, and I was like, "This is the house." Lovely house as well. Better than this shit hole. <laughs> <laughs> A crappy bathroom. <laughs> Not true. Yeah, do you read one? Hi, Abby and Pete. I'm with my boyfriend of nearly four years. He's a massive Liverpool 
slash football fanatic, which is completely okay. But in the past year, I've started realising how much he actually spends on his phone watching football. How much time he actually spends on his phone watching football. I'm completely okay with him watching Liverpool as he has supported them his whole life. But any days out, like going for dinner or shopping, he is constantly walking around with his phone in his hand, watching all levels of football from the worst teams that I've ever even heard of to the top teams. He tried to tell me it's an important game, but he's like a child walking around with their iPads in their hands. Any on any ideas on what to do about this? It's the old power shift again, isn't it? <laughs> What do you mean? Well, you know, she was fine with it at the start and, you know, <laughs> the feet are under the table. No, now, she said she was fine with him watching his team that he liked. Not oh. walk. How annoying. I know exactly because you've done this to me. It's like 10 paces behind like that on the phone. And I'm like trying something. Do you like this, babe? And you're like, yeah, yeah. And it could be a bin bag and you're not even paying any attention. <laughs> yeah, I, I, there's a bit of give and take in relationships. I think, you know, you're like being a football fan. Um, no, listen. I do. There's a lot of there's a lot of give and take in in the football situations. Like you know, I'm, I'm I paused said, the game. I'm glad the other you day. said football situations because well, you you're making can... out that you're like so hard done by. No, not so at all. No. I'm just saying. I'm just saying with, with the football situation. Like I I won't watch you know everything that's on. If I watched everything that's on, you'd never see me, which is I think is happening here. He's obviously. I wouldn't mind that actually. Watching... At the <laughs> I actually wouldn't. Well, I'll start watching more then. Go on. Yeah, I think I think he just probably needs to just, um, you know, not watch absolutely everything. If he's out, then perhaps just get off the phone a little bit. But unless, yeah, unless it's a big game, then I'm all for it. So what qualifies as a big game? Well, it depends what he's into. Obviously, he's a Liverpool fan, so he's going to watch every Liverpool game. That's fine. Um, but he's watching even lower league teams. Yeah, but you might be, like you say, into, into the lower leagues. It's, it's, it's exciting. You know, it's a different kind of football. You just completely contradicted No, but I'm saying if, it depends what he's into. He needs to choose. what He might not care about Italian football, but watch it. So if you don't care as much, just maybe just I leave that I wasn't even out. going fucking international with this. <laughs> I was just be. talking about English football. Yeah, well, I, we don't know. Don't, are you so, throw in like foreign games into the yeah, mix? Yeah, like, lots of people watch they can Italian, piss Spanish. right off. They can piss <laughs> right off. Literally, you know, <laughs> if it's like a Champions League where Italy is playing Liverpool or whatever, that's fine. Yeah, but, but you've got like El Clasico or you've got like, you know, the Milan derby. Or, you know, there's some big games out there that aren't, that aren't in the Premier League. You know, might Germany be non- have some good teams? Yeah. Bayern Munich. So we could... Dortmund. You've got, you got some good games out there. What's the... Um, Bayern. Bayern. Yeah. Bayern, Bayern. You just, just call that. them Bayern, don't you? You can. When you're in the know, babe. <laughs> I've actually called them Bayern. Oh, it's Bayern. <laughs> Bayern and Man U today. <laughs> I actually prefer watching the foreign teams. Do you indeed? I do. Sure you do. All right, there's another one. Hey, both. Uh, I've been with my wife for ten years now, and she's never. Been you didn't fitness. give him an answer. Did we not? No, I just I just said he just needs to rein it in a little bit. I think. Yeah, I and think she needs to stop moaning. I think he should. <laughs> I think he should just fuck off with the football and have some respect and spend some nice time with his wife. Instead. I think she should just give him a break, really. Yeah, Go I mean, shopping by yourself. I yeah. think she should just take his SIM card out of his phone and say, deal with that. <laughs> so, yeah, you do that. If yeah, you knew, you if you you knew how. Have, you don't have SIM cards now, Joe? Yeah, you do, actually, I think. You've got to put that little pin in, haven't you? I did it for Sophia. No idea. I got so proud of myself. I like Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> Not Bill Gates. Who's that? Steve Jobs. <laughs> so, yeah, I was giving it to they? Steve Jobs. I'll sort that. <laughs> okay, next one. Honey. Uh... I've been with my wife for 10 years now and she's never been into fitness. However, all of a sudden she's found the gym and now she thinks she's the next Paula Radcliffe. She's always leaving me with the kids. Who's Paula Radcliffe? Yeah, she's one of the best runners we've ever produced. She's always leaving me with the kids and going off to the gym most evenings and even weekends. She's having an affair. Uh, We could could be at home as a family in the middle of a Saturday or Sunday. uh, Just all of a sudden go, right, I'm off to the gym after receiving a text. No, I made that that up. Got a text. <laughs> she's also the queen of yo-yo diets, but now she'll eat something that's not fruit or salad, then be like, oh, I've eaten a biscuit. I need to go to the gym. 
I do go to the gym myself, um, but do it first thing when everyone's asleep, get it out of the way and not distract anyone. What should I do? It's becoming really annoying. People don't go to the gym in the middle of the day. Let's just let's just throw it out there. You just don't. It's hard enough going in the morning. I think you got the kids as well. Like maybe you should she should perhaps do it like evening All I or morning. Do, is do it. it. Does feel a bit a bit strange, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> is it strange? I I said I said affair when I was reading it. It does does smell of an affair. I don't know why. It's like a, I don't want it to be. But. Just working out. I work out. I um. God. I started riding again. I've um. Right in the middle of the day. Yeah. yeah the phone will go ding ding ding. I've got to go riding. <laughs> One thirty actually. And I sent I sent Pete a video of myself. Well, obviously on the horse and my lesson. And Pete just texted me back going, "Who is your instructor?" I, oh, he looked pretty like suave and he had some guns on him and I thought and he was like Ab was on the horse and um, she sent me a video going, here's me on the horse I said who's your instructor <laughs> she said uh, you know that's Fabio Juan, that's <laughs> Juan Carlos <laughs> his, his name is um, Anthony and he is Juan Don De Marco gorgeous, but he's married he's got a husband he's yeah, got okay. nothing to worry about well, I felt slightly better when I um, when he told me he was uh, gay I, was, I felt slightly better about that, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't have been too happy with it. It's like my, you know, like my mate who, a mate of a mate who had the, had the tennis. Yeah, but just the because he's lessons. a hot guy, it doesn't mean you're gonna have an affair with him. No, it doesn't. But you know, you know what? Like, you just never know, do you? But you're more likely to than if he was an ugly guy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Valid point, Ross. Well, he, he definitely didn't fancy me, so you know. Maybe I'll have an affair with him then. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I think it's more. It's, I think it's more you. I'm worried about than me. Bloody hell, Pete! I, I put I put the video on my in, on my Instagram, and everyone was like, "Bloody hell, who's your instructor? He's absolutely dropped dead gorgeous." But he is. He is gorgeous. But you know, he he, he has got a husband, so he's he's unavailable on every aspect. Um, but um, but you know, I could if she's. If she's got this real passion for the gym, all of a sudden he said she hasn't been in the gym for ten years. You know, I get it. I haven't been horse riding. That's for, what that's what smells me for over. No, I, no, it doesn't smell to oh, me. Right. I'm just saying with me with the horse riding, I came home and I hadn't stopped smiling like the whole day. And I said to Pete, you know, I've I've I fell in love with this again. I've found my passion, and I've never been as happy in a long time as I was on that horse. Have I? You need to. You need to have. We talked about this before. You need to have passions. I think. I know, but I'm just saying. Like, if if a lesson came available, I I would go morning, noon, or night to, to horse ride, because I just absolutely love it. You know, just be mm. and a horse is literally my favorite animal mm. as well. So to be around horses and learn something and just, you know, I was so fearful after like over ten years of not riding a horse, to get back on an, mm. this incredible horse and you know, do something I love. It just felt so good. So she might be, you know, she might be enjoying this, you know, newfound fitness. A, a body's probably changing. She's looking great, feeling full of energy and she might want to go. We can't just l- label it a fair. No, no, no. I agree with you because we, like we, we, you know yourself when you go to the gym, when you, you don't go to the gym for ages. can't just write her off as an affair. <laughs> when you don't go to the gym for ages and then you start going, it's like, it's like a drug. You start enjoying it again. You start going, oh. But I say that to you, don't I'm like, why are you going to the gym? Why not? Because I always think, I always think you're having an affair when you go to the yeah, gym, don't I? You do say that to me, yeah. What are you going to the gym for, Pete? I'm sculpting. I love you the way you are. <laughs> Seriously, look at me. It's what's inside that counts. <laughs> and that's what I love. The guns, babe. Two tickets for the gun show. I really offended your sister's boyfriend, didn't, husband, didn't yeah, I, with you that? you did, you did, actually, yeah. He, he's been working on his body for, like, weeks in the gym. And it was after that, that Viking thing we were talking about. Mm-hmm. And um, he's he's he put he had like a, a picture of the Viking, and then a picture of himself in the mirror. Terrible idea! Like, and you know I, I mean? just, like, he's he's looking all right. Yeah, and he I just he compare himself to the Viking, does he? Exactly. And I just burst out laughing. <laughs> I was like, as you can imagine, and I was like, is this the before picture? And he was like horrified, and he's he's like really upset him. And ever since he's been smashing the life out the gym. <laughs> I must say, he actually. Is, is looking great. So sometimes a little bit of uh, taking the piss actually works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> right, do you want to go? Do 
Peter. Dear Abby and Peter, my name is Louis. I'm 21 years old and I'm from Germany. Oh, are you a Red Bayern fan, by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently Love single, it. but there's this one girl that I can't get out of my head. Uh, there's this one girl I can't get out of my head. Um, she's three years younger than me and she's a friend of a friend. I would like to go out with her, but my last date took place around four and a half years ago. So that's why I'm a little nervous and I don't know how to ask her out properly. Maybe you guys have some advice from me. This is one for you. Um, because I don't want to lose this opportunity to go on a date with her just because I waited too long. Greetings, Louis. P.S. I hope my grammar wasn't too bad and you guys could understand everything. Aww. Oh. Danke, Louis. Danke. <laughs> <laughs> I just GCSE thrown a little bit German, of it. Um, love that, love that. GCSE German, don't well, knock it. It well gets done. me so far when I'm in Germany. Yeah, superb. Danke. At least I can say I'm 14 with short brown hair. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then. Ich bin wird 10 Jahre alt. Ich habe ein brun ish kurt. Well done. I'm well impressed. Well, yeah. yeah. It's the only fucking thing I can say. Yeah. I don't know why that stuck out to me in my, in the, in my five years of German lessons. That's mm. all I can say. Although, I, when I, I've I, had a few drinks and surrounded by Germans, I'm fluent. Yeah. Aren't I, though? No. No, no I am. No, to <laughs> French. We're better at French. I'm better at French. Well, I'm. I, I, the I, tricolor just comes straight flying back to me. <laughs> yeah. The tricolor. Jean Claude. <laughs> tricolor. <laughs> um, uh, so, Louis, he's 21, he's from Germany, and he's worried about speaking to Liz. So, um, I think you should ask him out because I don't think you had a date before you were 21. Is that correct? Um, he hasn't had a date before for four years. He's just got to go for it, hasn't he? It's hard. It's hard when you're that age. You get really nervous about about it. I think you build it up in your own head and worry about things. And he sounds Is it a bit in betweenery. Yeah, but he sounds like a nice a nice boy. Like obviously worried about his grammar and things like you know. He's obviously a nice boy. He always worries about things. He's probably what you know. He just needs to go and be himself. Uh, in, you know, speak to her. And I think. Okay, so I'm Liz and you're Louis. Ooh. Ooh. Hit hit on me. Uh Hi. You go see Bayern? <laughs> I love the German accents. Literally one of my favourites. You want to go see Bayern with me? You look German. <laughs> I feel a bit Blondie. Um, no, I think he's just got to chat to her. Just go, how are you doing? What are you up to? You know? What, you know, here we go again. This is, uh, did I say this is my wine last week? What is it? Pete's English foreign accent oh, yeah you did you did you've did. You just you've just done it again <laughs> yeah well I just you can understand so it. what 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 should he say come on let's, give him a one liner let's, let's on. enact give this give him a one liner um, can you catch because there's two balls coming your way <laughs> <laughs> that would be a firm <laughs> what would you do seriously if I walked over to you and I, and I said that like can you catch and he said yeah there's two balls coming your way. <laughs> I can't catch, so I'd be like, no, I can't. <laughs> you'd definitely laugh. I'd laugh. That would break the ice. You'd It'd break I mean? the you'd ice, go, but oh, I, don't, you're disgusting. I don't think you could get it away with that this day and age. You couldn't get away with that. You know, with all the um, <clears throat> stuff that's going on. Mm. What I about, don't... what about, I'm here. What are your other two wishes? <laughs> 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 oh, my God. No, because that's not funny, that one. Are you tired? Because you've been running through my mind all night. <laughs> Did it hurt when you fell from heaven? I'd be like, no, but does this hurt? <laughs> you know, if you, if you can get a laugh, and that's a great thing. Mm. Do you like raisins? No. How about a date? <laughs> <laughs> Say you're on my phone. Your number's not in it. <laughs> I think that's what I said to you, didn't I? What did you say to me when you asked me for my number? Did well, you, you say came that? over to me, didn't you? Yeah, but I didn't ask you. Then you were like, please can I have your number. <laughs> Never to even like you. My life. Gorgeous. Oh, I was like, I pissed off. Got loads of birds in it. <laughs> <laughs> Crab <at> me style. <laughs> so oh, I come back to your come, come back at half two. <laughs> half two? AM or P PM? It's only midnight, love. Steady on. <laughs> Loads of options here. <laughs> Cocky today. <laughs> that you, just for you to come up with that. What? So easy. <laughs> what? Come back at half two. 
What? That must be a thing that you've actually like discussed with your friends. Yeah, it's, it's options, isn't it? It's what your options are. What? Give absolute filth. Oh, shit, you will. Come back at half two. I'm like, what you, the hell are you talking about? Half two in the afternoon? Morning? You've actually thought of that then? We're in, well, in a nightclub, babe. Sometimes it's not half two in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mm. yeah I, I'm quite enjoying these one-liners, apart from your disgusting ones. <laughs> so we should ask the um, ask our listeners to give us their best one-line ones. Yeah, I'm sure there's some absolute bogeys here. Some very uh, keep some... it keep them classy now, folks. Keep them classy. Yeah, or not? We don't have to read them out. <laughs> <laughs> don't entertain well, well. us for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of the agony abs, and we're coming to the end of another episode. Mm -hmm. We've discussed the importance of being a godparent and something which I want to brush up my skills on. I'm going to take my role more seriously and hopefully, you know, they don't die and leave me with more kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think like what I say is like, obviously the role and, you know, how you choose them, that kind of thing. I feel it should, should be someone maybe outside the family that really is close to you. Mm. Um, that you trust, like it's almost like a like a best man or a maid of honor kind of thing isn't yeah. it? for life. I think it's a it's a it's a great thing to be a good honor mm. to bestow on someone and to to mm. be. Um, so hopefully we can make it like that. We found, I think we found out a lot today. We found out you can speak really good German. You know who Bayern Munich are. Danke. Um, we found we found lots out. I've used some of my best chat lines. We found out that you pick up girls in the club at half two. You wait, wait till half two a.m. to pick up chicks in the club. No, I don't. Revolting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, gang. And we'll see you next week. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>